Welcome back everyone. In this video, we've got this beautiful rump cap. They obviously make for a perfect steak, but in this video, we're gonna be smoking it like a brisket and I can assure you it comes out amazing. So we're gonna get started by setting our smoker up. Whatever smoker you're using, you can set it up and follow the temperature guides that we're gonna be going through in this video. So we'll open our smoker up, take our cooking grate out, our heat deflector, and then we'll fill our charcoal basket up with some lump charcoal. But if you wanna use briquettes, then go ahead. And then we'll bury a couple of fire lighters in there and light them up. And we'll leave the lid open and give that five or 10 minutes until the charcoal starts catching light. So while our charcoal's catching light, let's get this rump cap sorted. Right, so for starters, you always wanna take note of which way the grain is running in the meat. As you can see, it's running across this way. I'm hoping you can see that on camera. So when we slice this later on, we are gonna be cutting against the grain this way. So if you want to, you can always put a light incision across that way, and then that way you know which way to cut later on once it's all cooked. So we're gonna get started by trimming this. Now this doesn't need any trimming on the bottom, and we probably only need to trim off a few mil worth of fat on the top, so we'll get started by doing that. We wanna leave a nice fat coverage, about two to three mil thick on this one. All right, so I'm happy with that. Now we can get it seasoned up. So feel free to use your favorite beef rub for this or salt and pepper would do the trick nicely as well. We're gonna be using a combination of our steak shooter and some heavenly hell pistol powder. Now that fat's a little bit dry on top of the rump cap, so we're just gonna give it a light coat in some mustard just to help bind our rub to the meat. So we'll go ahead and give this a nice even coverage on both sides. So now our rump cap's seasoned up, we can get some smoking wood ready. Use your favorite smoking wood. I love using cherry with beef. So we've got some cherry from Natural Smoke. Just a couple of small chunks like this for a cut that size is perfect. You don't wanna use much more than that or you're gonna potentially over smoke your meat. Think of smoking wood like another ingredient. You just want a nice subtle taste. If you were to use five or six chunks like this, you'd get a really strong influence in that piece of meat. If I was doing a full pack of brisket, something seven to eight kilos, then I'd probably use four or five chunks. But like I said, for something this size, two chunks like this is fine. And for anyone wondering, this is a black onyx piece of beef by Rangers Valley. We've picked this up from our butcher at Austral Meats and the charcoal we're using today is the B&B &B brand. So now this is all ready, let's have a look at how our smoker's going. Right, so our fire lighters have burnt out, our charcoal started catching light, so we can shut our lid, make sure this vent's wide open and this vent's wide open and we'll let our smoker start coming up to temperature. Right, so our smoker is just about up to temperature. Let's get the rest of it set up and this rump cap in. All right, so we'll get our cherry chunks on. We'll put one straight on the fire and then one just off a bit so that'll catch light in an hour or so. Get our heat deflector in, our cooking grate and our beautiful rump cap. And I've also got a temperature probe. Just gonna clip on right there and I'll show you why. Now we'll shut our lid. So I've got to go out for a few hours while this rump cap's on. Now these drums are renowned for holding temperatures beautifully, but we've got quite a windy day coming in. So I'm gonna set up this temperature controller and I'll show you how it works. So we've got the unit here, and then we've got the hose that will pump air in and control our temperatures. So this attachment is more made for Kamados, but you can make it work with the drum. I've done it before. You wanna open your vent right up and you slide this bracket under there and it's pretty much all sealed off as you can see and then on the unit obviously probe one is the one we've got on our cooking grate you can press enter barbecue set our temperature i want to run this at 275 fahrenheit or 135 celsius press that button you can hear that fan kick in and it also tells you what percentage the fan is running at so once that comes up to near our target temperature that fan will slow down and stop when it gets there. And then as the temperature dips below the target temperature, the fan will kick back in and it's just gonna keep doing that throughout the day. So we'll let this unit do its thing. So you can connect that unit to Wi-Fi, hook it up with your phone, and you can see exactly what your temperatures are doing while you're out at the shops. You can adjust your temperatures as well. So it's a really handy unit. If you're handy enough, you can make different adapters up so it suits all different types of barbecues. But like I said, that one is mainly suited to the slide style vents you mainly see on the Kamado types of barbecues. 
And if you are interested in looking at one of these units, I'll put a link down in the video description for you to check out. So we're gonna let our rump cap go now for a few hours or until we are happy with the bark and we are around that 160 Fahrenheit or 71 degrees Celsius internal mark. So if you've got a meat probe, chuck one in. And something I forgot to mention with this unit, you do still have two additional ports where you can run meat probes for whatever you're cooking. So we'll be back now once we're ready for the next step. All right, so our rum cup's been smoking away for around three hours now. So let's open up our smoker and have a look. All right, that's looking awesome. Our bark is set nicely. It's not coming off on our finger. Let's have a check of the internal. 165, so I'm happy to wrap this up. All right, so I'm just gonna wrap this up nice and tight. And we'll get this back in our smoker. Now, one thing I've done here while the lid was open is I've paused it. And you pause it by holding down the button, just held it down again. And as you can see, it's kicked back in. So we've wrapped our rump cap up in butcher's paper and put it back in the smoker. Now you can wrap it in foil if you want. I chose butcher's paper just to help preserve that bark. And that's gonna go back in there now until we reach around the 205 Fahrenheit or 96 degrees Celsius internal mark. That's gonna be a good internal temperature to start probing and testing for probe tenderness. So once we get there, we're gonna get our instant read thermometer. We're gonna have a probe around. If it's not quite where we want it to be, we're gonna let it go a little bit further. Probe tenderness is gonna be our main point of reference as always when I'm cooking brisket or anything else low and slow, I always like to favor probe tenderness over temperature. Temperature's a relatively accurate guide, but I can't reiterate enough, probe tenderness is what you wanna go by. So we'll be back once we hit that internal temperature range. All right, we've been wrapped up for two hours now, so we are five hours total into this cook. We've just hit our target internal temperature of that 205 Fahrenheit or 96 degrees Celsius. So let's open it up, have a probe around and see where we're at. All right, so that's feeling really nice up the thinner end. Still got a little bit more to go on the thicker end. A little bit of resistance there. That's not gonna be much longer. I reckon we'll wrap it up for another half an hour and come back. All right, it's been another half an hour. Let's have another probe around. All right, that's definitely a lot better. I reckon we can get this out for a rest. So I'm gonna let this sit and steam off for a few minutes just to stop that cooking process. Then I'm gonna wrap it back up and rest it in an esky for a couple of hours until I'm ready to slice and serve it. So we'll come back then. So just remember, always cut against the grain. All right, time for a taste. Mm. Wow, that is so unbelievably soft. That texture is amazing. Oh, it just pulls apart so easy. Quite a bit of a different texture to your beef ribs or your brisket, but that is really, really good. That is definitely up there. If you've got a rump cap laying around and you don't want to do it for a steak, definitely give this a try. That is bloody good. Well, that's the end of the video, everyone. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.